Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, dear friends, dear audience, uh, it is a pleasure for me to announce our today's uh, event titled Innovation and Startup Ecosystem in Poland and Hungary, which uh, uh, event is organized uh, by the Vasla Pertak uh, Foundation from Poland and the Institute for Foreign Affairs and Trade uh, from Hungary. And the main uh, goal is to highlight the specificities and problems and opportunities of innovation in the startup ecosystem in Poland and Hungary. Let me introduce the speakers of uh, today's event. First of all, uh, Mr. Professor Zoltan Cifalvai uh, from the Matthias Corvinus Collegium, head of center of next technological uh, futures. Uh, Professor Jay Falvai has a strong uh, academic background and a strong governmental background. So uh, I'm sure that uh, as a keynote speaker, he will deliver and contribute a lot to this topic. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Piotr Arak, the director of the Polish Economic Institute. Um, Ms. Maria molnar nagy University Business Relations Expert by the MOL Group. Uh, Mr. Marcin Sova, Head of Unit, the Unit of Department of Innovation and Industrial Policy, Ministry of Economic Development, Labor and Technology. Uh, Mr. Laszlo Jonas, Business Development Manager of the Design Terminal. And uh, Ms. Anna Wisniewski, uh, Associate Research Fellow of the Institute for Foreign Affairs and Trade. Uh, who will uh, uh, shortly introduce uh, the IFAT Fairchak project, uh, which is the framework of, of this event today. And this one is the second event of this uh, event series. And myself, I am uh, Laszlo Vasha, a senior researcher of the Institute for Foreign Affairs and Trade. And I will serve you tonight, uh, today, today evening, as uh, uh, the moderator uh, of the evening. So I hereby would like to ask uh, Anna Wisniewski uh, to introduce this project. Anna, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Laszlo, and uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy that uh, today we are here at the second uh, uh, event uh, in the framework of this um, uh, IFAT and um, uh, Felczak uh, project. The discussion is uh, part of the Vesla Felczak uh, workshop series and uh, also the Hungarian Polish uh, knowledge base program. As I uh, said, the aim of the pro project was to point out and address such uh, issues, such topics that might be of interest uh, within the Polish-Hungarian cooperation. The first uh, event uh, uh, within this uh, project and these series uh, focused on green economy, green energy. The second one is focusing on innovation and startup ecosystem in uh, our countries. And the third one will be uh, on uh, good practices in the bilateral uh, relationship between uh, the Polish and the Hungarian economy. Uh, to each event, we uh, invited the participants uh, from the economy. So there are representatives of companies, uh, national companies, multinational companies. And also we um, uh, invited uh, experts from uh, institutions, um, different uh, think tank institutes, and also from the government. Uh, I'm very happy that today a very interesting and a very future related topic will be in the, fo uh, in the focus of uh, the discussion. And I hope that uh, we will learn a lot uh, from that. To each uh, panel uh, discussion, there was also a four to one study prepared. I will just share the link of this study to, in the chat um, uh, for today's event. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anna, um, for uh, introducing the project. Thank you. Thank you very much for introducing this uh, project. Now I would like to ask uh, uh, Professor Jay Falvai uh, to do his key keynotes. And please let me know uh, once I should start the slides. Mr. Jay Falvai, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for the kind invitation. And um, 
welcome everybody on the on the screen and in, in, in the group and just to join what Anna said uh, yes the future is already here and we can discuss what does it mean and in the countries of central and eastern uh, Europe uh, sorry about it I would like to start with some carpet bombing of figures but I do think then when we discuss innovation and startups maybe it is uh, good when we can uh, set the scene uh, what we are talking uh, about it. So uh, I have put uh, some data together based on the dearroom.co, which is uh, one of the main uh, institutional website collecting data on, on startups. And uh, just for the comparison, I have put here not just the data for Poland and Hungary, but also the so-called Visegrad 4. And for the comparison, uh, Finland, Austria, and Estonia is also here on this. On, on the figure. So um, the, one of the basic problem you can see in uh, these uh, figures, and I will go into details uh, immediately, is the scaling. When we look just the number of the, the brackets, the number of scale ups, the scale ups are companies so which can uh, collect more than 1 million euro funding. That means uh, startups which uh, has already a product has already the market and able to scale. And that is where the Central and Eastern European countries and also in Poland and Hungary compared to Finland and also compared to Austria is lagging behind. When you look at just the, the, the column in the middle and, and the figures of the scale-ups and in brackets you can find the figures for the startups, uh, around 5% of the startups are able to scale in Central and Eastern Europe, in Poland and Hungary, more than 10% in Finland. So there is something uh, beyond, or should be something beyond. That means when we look at only the sheer number of startups, uh, our countries are, are more or less okay. When we look at how the startups can scale and grow, there are some kind of, of problem in, in that case. And I made a normalization in, uh, in these figures because uh, certain the size of the country, the size of the economy is important. And uh, in this case, we can see that in Estonia or in Finland, the scale-ups can receive uh, more uh, funding when we compare the total funding of scale-up per 1 billion of uh, GDP. Uh, the European average is uh, 6.5 and Poland and Hungary is lagging behind, and Finland and Estonia is, uh, is by order of magnitude ahead. So the one of the problem is here in that case, not uh, only the sheer number of, of startups, is rather the scaling, how they can scale. And just uh, um, for some consideration, I have put here not just the figures for the European Union, but also for the United Kingdom, which is not part uh, anymore of the, the, the European Union. And when you look at these figures, uh, you can see that, for example, the total funding of scale-ups, uh, a little bit more than 100 uh, uh, billion euro in the European Union, and more than 50 in the UK. So I think it uh, speaks for that. Uh, what uh, Brexit means in uh, terms of innovation and, and startups. But maybe when we go further to the next slides, uh, we can uh, see uh, at, uh, at, a, at the level of the cities and compare a little bit Warsaw, Budapest, but also Prague uh, here. Uh, we get the same picture. Uh, that uh, Helsinki, which uh, has the size of Budapest, uh, but, uh, but the total funding of scale-ups is almost 10 times uh, more. Warsaw is, is relatively good placed here, but when we compare to with Tallinn, uh, uh, we can see that uh, there is a room for, for further funding uh, possibilities. And when we move to scale ups and the scaling, uh, the number of scale ups with a market value more than 200 million, we can see that, uh, that there is something with a 
with the scale and the growth of these this company of, of these startups so we are talking always about the startups how can we, we support the startups i do think that uh, one of the most important part to uh, help the startup or support the startup to grow and uh, when we move to the next slides i will have only four slides and with the figures uh, I do think two important uh, um, factors are playing a key role. One is talent. What access uh, the startups or, or also the venture capitals have uh, to, to talent? And once again, we see here the differences. It's a relative interesting figures that means the number of funders who attended to the universities of the scale-up city. In that case, the, the number of funders of startups who were attended at the universities in Warsaw and in Budapest, there's only, only 50 funder of start of scale-ups uh, uh, were attended in, in, uh, in Budapest and in Warsaw, more than 100. But Helsinki, once again, is, is ahead. So, uh, in, I think in that case that uh, that uh, Budapest, uh, we or in Hungary, we have to do more that the students were more interested uh, to have a career as a startup. Uh, in international comparison, also is is staying relatively good, and for me it was also surprising that. Uh, that Poland is more decentralized in uh, this case. Also, Krakow, Warsaw, Poznan uh, has uh, is relative uh, considerable number of funders who attended to that uh, universities. Uh, I would say that in Budapest and and, and also in in Prague, um, that is more should be done uh, uh, that uh, the students will consider also as a future prospect to fund or to start a startups and let's look at the the last uh, uh, slides uh, what i have yeah uh, for the finance i think it is the part where there is a real catch up uh, we when we look at the, the the portfolio size of the venture capital funds in uh, in uh, Central and Eastern Europe, how many startups they have. Uh, Warsaw is very good place. Uh, when we look at the all-time investment, okay, all time means all the time uh, before, and uh, that has the consequence in that case, has been as spoke started uh, all development uh, many, many years before, and that is the difference. But I think that that this is the part where where Prague, Budapest, uh, Warsaw is catching up. So providing financing uh, possibilities, venture capitals, uh, uh, funds and in investment. Uh, so that is this part where we have uh, to do more, I think is, uh, is a two point. That is what I wanted to show with this, these figures. One is the scaling. Uh, to encourage and to help uh, and to provide a the environment uh, for scaling. And the scaling means, uh, anyway, global scaling. And the second is to strengthen the talent uh, background. So that would be the four uh, figures. Certainly all these uh, tables we can look at in details, but uh, I, I do think the main message is uh, where these what I try to uh, signalize, and I think that uh, that um, yeah, let's discuss uh, the issues. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Uh, it was very interesting to see the differences uh, both in the region and uh, between uh, between the different countries and it is providing a great context for our uh, discussion. Uh, Mr. Arak, I would like to ask you for doing your, your uh, uh, kind of uh, keynote as, as well, I would say. 
uh, so to deliver your speech. Uh, Mr. Arak, the floor is yours. Is, I don't have uh, such interesting slides to show, uh, although there there might be some interesting information in the in the pieces that uh, uh, probably because as I saw, Marcin Sova and I use the same data uh, coming from the VC rounds in in uh, in Warsaw. Um, we pretty much know more about our market and our, and its under development. And uh, as you can see uh, from the da data um, shown by Zoltan, we, we saw that uh, the, 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 um, uh, the situation across uh, Central and Eastern Europe uh, differs. Uh, one could say that uh, in many ways uh, we lag behind uh, other countries. We especially, and talking about Budapest and Warsaw, uh, lag behind Tallinn uh, in many ways. Uh, but uh, we still see uh, Warsaw was a pretty much underdeveloped uh, country, uh, as an underdeveloped capital, and also an underdeveloped uh, city, city in terms of uh, investments uh, and VC. Mm, just in the last uh, two years, we saw a 14-fold increase uh, in the VC rounds um, uh, estimated by the by the PFR. Uh, venture um, uh, investment fund, a state investment fund, and this was also a 70% uh, increase um, uh, in 2020 in comparison to 2019, uh, which during the pandemic we saw a lot of more interest and a lot of those high value um, last round uh, uh, decisions being made. Um, and this is also because since 2016, a lot of state aid and funds, uh, the, the, the so-called Start in Poland program was, was introduced, also with financing uh, almost the biggest in terms of the volume and the amount of money available uh, in Central and Eastern Europe. Um, uh, but, I, but I would say uh, besides that, it's... Um, the the interests of true market and investors outside of Poland and outside of state agencies is just starting to uh, to happen. In 2020, um, a lot of investors were rumoring um, more uh, VC um, engagement uh, within Poland. Uh, there were many blog posts about possible interest in, in, in investing in our country. The, the reason for that was the underdevelopment, basically, of the market. So, so they saw it as a big a possibility and opportunity in order to have a, a pretty big um, return on investment in the early uh, year or second, because there's not that much uh, other comp competition in it. Um, and, um, the, you know, the biggest problem, I would say, both, both for Budapest and both for Warsaw, is the, the moderate innovativeness of our economies. Uh, so uh, this is basically um, what we see, I don't know, European Commission's data, when you see the R&D investments, uh, is it private or is it uh, state uh, money being spent? Uh, the numbers are not high in comparison to Western Europe. Uh, are they are not even high in comparison to some of the smaller countries in Central and Eastern Europe, which makes um, uh, which makes the the, the under underdevelopment even more uh, more apparent. Uh, but uh, uh, the the opportunity is with the development of the economies, fasting developing. Poland and Hungary was one, were one of the fastest developing economies before the crisis. Um, and the pandemic of 2020, aside of Ireland with its, uh, I would say, sketchy uh, statistics uh, in terms of GDP growth. Um, uh, and um, we would say that uh, with a growing market, it's going to be a bit, uh, the interest in those different uh, new tech and um, uh, in the startup scene is going to be bigger. Uh, we don't, and I say it as a, as a remark to myself, but also to, to people working uh, within the public authorities, we don't, um, uh, we care about startups, we, uh, we provide funding, 
but it's not the the key issue of the economy. It's not the you know the the, the pillar that is shaping uh, the growth rates. Uh, it's the industry uh, which is creating still value we see in the pandemic. Uh, so it's not the main focus in comparison to the smaller countries where uh, where it's easier to focus all the state aid. Um, uh, the the facilities uh, make them make the facilities available to. Uh, to start up and smaller companies, uh, but with a much more diversified economy, more focused on industry, um, uh, you probably in the near future can can end up with uh, some spin-off uh, companies which which use this uh, uh, industrial complex that we have, uh, um, and probably uh, what is also being more apparent with Poland, uh, I expect uh, more. Uh, spin-off and some, you know, analysts and uh, programmers and people working for international corporations being present in Poland. Poland is an exporter of services within the European Union, programming, taxing, uh, lawyers even, um, uh, law consulting. Um, from that, we expect probably those people uh, wanting to find a, a different route and career and start their own businesses, and then using the possibilities of funding uh, within within the, um, uh, the developing market. Uh, but as, as I said, it's it's uh, we're pretty much in a in a beginner's uh, uh, level here, and uh, we don't have any unicorn. We don't have um, that. You know, a lot of if a lot of things are being uh, is, are happening. In the last two years, um, there is, a, you know, there is a big difference in comparison to what was present on the market five years ago. Uh, but the the, the 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 structural elements to the economy, how it's uh, what is truly important to 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 the growth, are still here. It's not that uh, the technological sector is going to become the most important element. We would love to have it as important, but still the, the crucial uh, uh, competitive advantage is, is somewhere else and um, of the economy. And uh, uh, hopefully with the development, with more, more R&D expenditures, with more uh, also uh, not only state, but also private investments being present and also uh, hopefully because uh, of the uh, better uh, press in terms of um, uh, startup investments and the attractiveness in that term. Um, we're going to see a lot more uh, valuation uh, and a lot of more um, investments coming in uh, from VCs uh, from the other side of the, side of the pond, uh, but also from, from other European countries. Uh, and I hope that we're going to be somewhere uh, higher in those rankings uh, uh, when you see them of, of investors. But uh, it's 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 difficult. We don't have you know a unicorn company, um, and I am not sure if we're going to easily have one in the near future. It's 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 too early to say. Maybe someone else is more optimistic than me. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arak. Uh, Miss uh, Molnar, now the floor is yours. For your Thank you. Remarks. I will try to try to continue with a great deal of optimism and also going back to your remarks, Mr. Araka, coming from a very moderate innovator sector, which is the oil and gas and petrochemicals uh, industry. I can say that uh, there has been a paradigm shift in the past years. And I think this is also uh, due to the, the uh, state uh, incentives and the programs which were introduced by the Hungarian Ministry of Innovation and Technology and also the National Office of uh, Innovation and R&D. And uh, also these programs uh, which are meant to, to motivate 
industrial university collaboration. These all work towards uh, what we call the triple helix of innovation. And I believe that this is really important that the state, the, the, the public sector, uh, the academic uh, fields and the industries work together. And uh, we already see some of the good examples which, which raise out of these collaborations and, uh, and it serves our company. Uh, MOL is uh, hopefully in the upcoming years going to be known as not only a traditional oil and gas and petrochemicals company, but uh, a great player in circular economy because uh, the energy transition uh, has accelerated so fast in the past years and also the customer demands are changing so rapidly that uh, we also updated our strategy. It's called Shape Tomorrow 2030 and our company is committed to spend $1 billion on new businesses in low carbon and sustainable fields. And it is our commitment to become uh, one of the key players of circular economy. And we do not only uh, invest money because as uh, Mr. Arak also said, money is not enough. And uh, I would also like to link back to M Professor Chefa Vai's words that uh, without talent, uh, you can have all the money in the world, but you're not gonna be able to do it. So what we are focused on now are the centers of competence, which are also part of the concept of the Hungarian uh, state, uh, making the universities the centers of innovation. Universities have the capability to provide students the future engineers and the future staff for companies, but also the future startuppers. At the same time, they have the basis of uh, R&D and innovation. They have the infrastructure, the physical infrastructure, the laboratories, and the huge knowledge of, uh, of the universities. And combining this with the business-driven approach of a company, actually these programs of the state are connecting the challenges of the industry with the competencies of the universities. And uh, these uh, programs, which uh, started as uh, projects, uh, university in, uh, industry collaboration projects, uh, they have grown into centers of competence. And I think the key here, which I would like to highlight, is that uh, we, we also experienced a paradigm shift coming from silo thinking uh, in each and every member of this ecosystem. It can be a faculty of a university or it can be a, a business line within a corporate company thinking about their own KPIs and not looking out. Uh, and also traditionally having such a closed innovation environment. Now it became an open environment for sharing problems, for sharing challenges of the industry, with the universities, with the startups, and with the new generation of, of uh, talents. And I really hope that we are going to see the results of this very soon. We recently established a circular economy science park with the University of Pannonia in Veszprém, And we believe that it can become a thematic innovation hub, connecting all the players in the field of R&D uh, industry, public sector, small and medium enterprises, and also serving as a startup hub. And uh, this way, we would like to attract the talents from all the region. And we would also like to create a competitive advantage in one field because we, we believe that we cannot do everything. So we cannot be the best in everything. But hopefully, circular economy will be a competitive advantage of ours and it can create a value for the national economy. And uh, just the last thought, uh, I personally believe that without uh, regional collaboration, this is not going to happen. And maybe going back to all those gaps in scale ups and you know the, the longevity of these startups, uh, probably not being able to go beyond the borders can be one of those obstacles. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Molnar, uh, for your thoughts and highlighting 
what the largest Hungarian company is doing for the startup ecosystem. And uh, you highlighted also the importance and uh, already a practice uh, or, or a future practice of the university uh, and, and, uh, and industrial company uh, cooperation where also the startups can have their uh, uh, very good and very useful role. And I agree indeed, uh, reg regional cooperation is needed as, as our countries, even Poland, uh, let's say is just too small uh, to provide the unicorns uh, and both on the demand and supply side um, the, the market is just not enough uh, for that. Um, yeah, Estonia is a kind of uh, miracle somehow, but it is another story now we are talking uh, on Poland and Hungary. So uh, I would like uh, to provide the floor uh, for uh, Mr. Marcin Sova. Mr. Sova, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, good evening. Uh... Thank you very much uh, to the Institute of, uh, for Foreign Affairs and Trade and uh, the Felczak uh, Foundation for inviting me to today's meeting as a former commercial counselor of the Polish Embassy here in Budapest and Nid Gudeli Gozdas, that means the graduate of St. Uh, Istvan Egyetem. Uh, Today I connect both our countries particularly strong and even I am speaking uh, to you uh, from Budapest, from Ruzadom. But uh, today I act as completely different person. I am head of unit in the Department of Innovation and Industrial Policy in our ministry, and I am responsible for horizontal innovation support instruments, mainly R&D tax reliefs and IP box tax relief uh, as a co-author of, of this, uh, these reliefs. And also I participated in the creation of the uh, so-called starting program Starting Poland program, a nationwide startup support uh, program. Uh, so called acts of on innovation uh, that entered into force the first one five years ago and the last one three years ago, not only removed many barriers uh, for innovators, but also created one of the most accessible instruments for supporting innovation. I mean R&D uh, tax relief. We are very proud of this instrument and every year number of companies that benefit from this relief is growing last year uh, or in uh, 2019, it was uh, a little bit more than 2,500 such a taxpayers, such a companies used this tax relief, but the number was uh, uh, bigger uh, by 26%. Uh, uh, this uh, few uh, statistical data is very important to realize the scale of our problem of Polish economy. We have nearly 2 million companies in Poland and about 6,000 conducts R&D, of which less than half use the available support instrument. Uh, but also uh, last five years have been a period, good period to uh, develop uh, the uh, startup ecosystem in Poland uh, through the Start in Poland program. Uh, we gave to startups so called smart money. So, not only uh, money, but also knowledge and networks for them to cooperate with mainly big uh, uh, companies. Uh, the effect of the development of the startup ecosystem is visible through the prism of the development of Polish venture capital market, which Mr. Arak uh, mentioned. So uh, in 2020, uh, we had uh, more than 300 investments and the value of these investments were about five, uh, was about uh, 470 million euro and the increase was by 70%. Uh, and we should remember that by uh, 2018, the value of VC investment in Poland was about only 50 million euro. So uh, this is a really a frog jump from 2018 to, to 2020. Most of the investments were of course seed investment, but uh, there were definitely more investments in round B or C. 
and we are also uh, are still waiting for the first Polish unicorn, but I think it's uh, really getting closer. Last year, uh, we had three uh, already big mega runs uh, with value about 55 to 80 million euro. So this is also in uh, European Union uh, terms, uh, uh, rather big amounts uh, of, of money to invest in, in, in one startup. Polish speciality in acceleration process is connecting startups with large companies. Uh, its goal was to combine the potential of startup with the experience, infrastructure and resources of corporation, including also state-owned companies. Thanks to this, startups have uh, opportunity to gain experience in building contacts and cooperation with large companies as well as to gain business partners and potential investors. Uh, the effect of the program uh, is commercialization of number of innovation, innovative solutions. So our experience shows that uh, we have uh, successfully connected these two worlds, startup and large uh, corporations. And maybe this is, uh, maybe it will be solution also for Hungarian idea. To, to, to join this, these efforts. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Sova, to highlight the situation and the uh, <clears throat> developments uh, uh, in, in Poland. Now, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Jonas to share his thoughts uh, with us, please. Thank you very much for the opportunity. So. First, I thought uh, it will be hard to say something interesting after Professor Chirfawai. But again, if I, if after these keynotes, it will be even much harder. So I have to take out a lot of things from my keynote, but, this, but I still try to be interesting from a, diff, from a different side. So I'm Laszlo Jonas, Head of Business Development and Design Termina, just to have a context uh, who we are. We are an innovation agency working in 12 different European countries. And uh, we believe that innovation is about the people, is about the human capacities. No, there is not uh, enough money in the world to be innovative. There are no best, best processes in the world to be innovative if the people do not want to do that. So what we believe at Design Terminal is you have to um, work with the people to be able to have a solutions, solution which is unique in their field. Um, and what is interesting for me in this topic is that how that everyone wants to be a startup superpower in the world. So if you check everyone's country strategy, you will see that we're gonna attract the best startups in the world. It's like that in from Thailand to the United States. And, and I do not think that if we don't have our niche to work with, we will be able to compete. And the, and the COVID is a great uh, opportunity to find this niche, to find our voice in, the, in this kind of uh, um, war for the innovative companies. I do not think startups are the best way even to phrase it because I believe that if someone is not even look like a startup, if they are able to um, give birth to five to 10, 15 families and provide something great for their uh, community, then I consider it's an important part of the innovation community. So um, back to our voice. I, I believe that uh, Hungary and Poland should uh, concentrate on business to business startups. Why it is? Um, we don't have such a big market as, as the United States. We're never gonna be the next Silicon Valley. It's not gonna happen. But how, what can be the best at? If we have good business to business startups, then one company needs enough for them to start, start to grow. And uh, I think this is our chance to become a great player in this field, to have a much bigger role um, than as we have now. Because to be able to raise startups like these, you have to have an ecosystem which enables connections between startups and cooperation, between startups and, and corporations that they can cooperate. And I believe that there is, a, there is such a niche that we can, we can be good at. Um, 
Many companies say that they are working together with startups. And I do not think that multinationals are the ones who we should talk with. We should enable small and medium enterprises in Hungary and in Poland to digitalize themselves with startups, to start connections with the startups. Then in this way, we will be able to um, maybe um, raise our first unicorn, but I do not think that's the most important. We will be able to um, bring up companies that uh, will stay in the region. There are many researchers nowadays that uh, shows if a startup starts to grow somewhere, then there are the part which produces the most uh, value added that will stay in the region. So if we are able to help these startups to have their clients from Hungary or their first clients uh, from Hungary and Poland, we will be able to help them to stay in the region. Then they will not gonna be sold to, uh, to Germany or to United States in the first year of their, uh, of their operations. So I believe that this is a niche that, where we should be concentrating on. And something else which uh, came to my mind uh, through the discussion is that, that can being a unicorn uh, be a goal? Can scaling be a, goal, be a goal in itself? There is a new movement growing, which is, which is called the zebra movement, um, that is saying that uh, Maybe, if you are, maybe you are not a unicorn, maybe you are not growing as a unicorn, but you are producing something which is valuable to your community. You are uh, sustainable, not just uh, spending or burning the money of, of, of an investor for years and become binary that if everything goes well, then you're gonna live, but if something goes wrong, then you'll die. You remember the, the WeWork scandal. A lot of money was burned through that. So I believe that, uh, we should also concentrate on the zebras and not just uh, uh, help to those ones who want to disrupt the work, but to those ones as getting back to the industry, to um, Mr. Arak's speech, those ones who can make our industries a bit more efficient. If I find a, someone that, if I find a startup that makes uh, um, one of the regional companies uh, operation a couple of percentage more efficient, then I'm very happy if we are able to work with them and to help them. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now, after, after uh, the keynote speeches are over, uh, the panelists have the chance to, to raise questions to each other or to make comments to each other or on the topic itself. And I hereby would like to announce to the audience that uh, they also have the chance uh, to raise questions or to do comments, please do that in the Q&A uh, uh, function or uh, sending a message via chat uh, uh, to me or to, to, uh, to all. So uh, I would like to ask our, moder uh, our, uh, our panelists um, whether they have any comments uh, to each other's uh, speeches or thoughts. Uh, meanwhile, you got uh, connected to this topic. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Um, uh, just two points. Um, um, <laughs> I got the impression we are waiting for a unicorn, you know, or we are waiting many for, for unicorns in, in Poland or, or in Hungary. Um, yeah, so we can wait, but, uh, but I, I, I agree what, uh, what the previous speaker said, that uh, the mass is also important. So that um, uh, we should be balanced between this, okay, maybe we will get a unicorn or, or future unicorn, some unicorn, but the most important is the mass innovation. The mass innovation across the border, across uh, many parts of the economy, circular economy, for example, or others. Uh, so I do think uh, the target should be rather the mass innovation, how to, Foster the mass innovation, and the mass innovation will produce unicorn uh, when we would like to have a unicorn. The second is the scaling. I think the scaling is somehow connected with the market size. It's true, uh, but it's also connecting with the technology. There are technologies which are scalable, and there are technologies which are not so scalable. Just an example. Um, the car is not scalable. We are 
all these countries are producing car. Uh, the algorithm of Uber is scalable and highly scalable, globally scalable, and it is not uh, has has no any connection with the market size. So I think it is also a, a question uh, in which part of the economy, in which niches, when you would like to have in that case. So where these uh, startups are, when the startups are in the part where the, the economy or the digital economies anyway, uh, is scalable, then uh, it is possible to scale and it is also possible to, to uh, reach the global market. Uh, certainly it is also an important startup which uh, has some novelties or, or some ideas for the local market, okay. But uh, when they are working in uh, industries and niche markets and, and technologies which are scalable, then uh, and, and the financing is 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 relatively good, then it would be possible to to scale better, and would be also possible to have a mass innovation uh, and not uh, just waiting for the for for the unicorns. Thank you. Thank you very much. Somebody. I to totally agree with uh, Mr. Chefaway. So the interesting thing is how to decide on the fields where, um, where scaling is possible. For example, um, if we talk about data, the ones who can scale are the ones who have the most data. So do we have enough data in the region? That's, that's a question. If we do not have enough data, then this is, is it the way? So that's the, that, that's the most interesting part. The decide now where to be able to scale in the coming years. I totally agree with that. Um, let, let, me, let me change my role uh, to an to a underinformed outsider from this field. And let me let me know, please, uh, what would be changed if we, I mean, uh, Poland and Hungary in our territory or somehow would have a, a unicorn. So what would be changed? So uh, the, the whole uh, uh, culture of this of this uh, entrepreneurship, which is absolutely missing, I think, in our countries uh, due to some hard times in the past decade uh, called uh, socialism, which killed all entrepreneurship uh, in that uh, generation. So what would be changed really if we could have, okay, so we would be proud for sure, but would it be such a motivation force for the other uh, uh, companies which would uh, occur uh, a boom, in, uh, a next boom in, in, the, in the startup uh, scenario? If, if I if I may answer, I just very hard to see who wants to talk in, in this panel. But anyway, so I think a unicorns have a twofold role. One of them is this it show the 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 university students, the young people that they can make it, that everyone can make it. And it's very important. I'm sure about that. But what we see uh, in Scandinavia is there are, they have more important role when the when the founders of the unicorns are exiting because they are the ones who are investing back so what we see um, at the example of skype what happened when the founders are exiting they became the first angel investors and they had enough experience to be able to grow big companies so i think that was one of these secret successes of scandinavia and these are the things why I wouldn't say unicorns, but companies who have an, an, a significant amount when how they can for the right they can sell it. Their founders are very useful for the economy. In Hungary, um, we have Gula Fahir who sold sold his company um, to IBM a couple of years ago, and now he's running a new uh, investment fund, which I'm sure will be the most successful in the coming years because he had the, uh, experience in the sector. Thank you. Thank you. If I may add to these yes. thoughts, yes. I think there is a third uh, 
maybe it's a factor, but I don't know. It's related to the culture uh, and the, the, the whole perception of our country. So for long years, we have been known, you know, for the smartest people, for Nobel Prizes and uh, the great researchers that unfortunately, some of them left our countries. Uh, but maybe having a unicorn, which is, you know, news, uh, globally, uh, we could gain back uh, some of that perception, the positive perception of our products, of our talents, of our technologies. And uh, on the other hand, I think that this can also be overcome without a unicorn. So we shouldn't be spending our time waiting for unicorns or fairies. But uh, for example, for the first part that uh, Laszlo mentioned, I think uh, having uh, um, shaping programs for entrepreneurial uh, attitude uh, from the secondary education, uh, moving on to university education, having startup academies, that can also create a sense for the youngsters that this is worth doing and, and we should enter. And here I would like to uh, link back to, to Mr. Sova's uh, presentation where I saw that uh, there are some programs also in Poland uh, aimed at shaping this entrepreneurship uh, from the young age. Yeah, uh, three uh, uh, thoughts from me. So the, uh, I think startups are the only one of the elements of the innovation ecosystem uh, and perhaps not the most important one, but uh, important enough to deal with. And of course, the unicorn is not an aim in itself, but it will give for others a positive impact. And I think that's all. And of course, somehow promotion of uh, uh, this uh, Polish or Hungarian ecosystem. Uh, so I think uh, therefore these thoughts are, are, are important and I think we uh, have enough data in the region also in the uh, uh, one country but most of them are not available so we have to make it accessible uh, to all businesses because we can't even imagine uh, what talented young uh, uh, guy uh, can do with uh, such an open data, for example. Uh, so, so I think uh, these are very important uh, things to, to open the data, which we have in, which are state owned data. And uh, as I know, in Poland, we, uh, we make it quite smartly. Uh, and of course, as I mentioned, we have uh, programs for, for startup. This is uh, somehow uh, mm, a big program, one of the biggest, and uh, it uh, has two big components, acceleration and uh, uh, um, investment uh, uh, cooperation with, with uh, VC funds. So both of them are, are, are very important because uh, uh, these startups that ended the acceleration program are the national market so-called for for VC uh, funds, uh, not only uh, Polish one, but also uh, at, the, at the older stage, also for international VC funds. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, meanwhile, we got some questions. So it seems I encourage our attendees to, to pose questions. Uh, the first uh, question was uh, uh, by DSA, building a competitive uh, environment for the region could also support building tools to share development opportunities with potential startups, I guess. Who or which players should build these tools? The question you can see in the question and answer uh, function uh, just below. So some of you probably can uh, answer this question.
Well, may, maybe I'm going to start, and I'm, I also want to want to answer another question which I saw is uh, directed at me and and uh, Martin Sova. Um, so, um, you know, in all the the, the knowledge exchange and also uh, the kind of twinning and in, in all the um, for the businesses to 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 uh, get together more easily is basically what the states should do. And a lot of state agencies and uh, the, the the businesses uh, can of course uh, do it on their own. We have you know commercial services which are available. It's quite easy to find some information. But if you want to promote uh, your own national uh, companies and in order for them to um, have the possibility to find a venture capital investor, uh, then probably it's a good 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 thing to do by the state. Mm, so I would say to the, the state should build those tools uh, at some level. It can cooperate with anybody. It can cooperate with international organizations. We can cooperate with a different country. You can cooperate with even state-owned enterprises. Um, uh, but in order for them to be universal and quite, a, a quite easily accessible, and it's, um, uh, uh, there should be the, 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 the intervention of the state. But uh, please remember that uh, it is also very important with an underdeveloped, underdeveloped market. So um, uh, uh, if you don't, if you see what's happening in different markets, then you know that you can mimic some kinds of solutions and uh, uh, use it as a catalyst for the further development. Um, uh, I wanted to 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 answer shortly your previous question about the unicorn. So, what why, why does it make a difference? It uh, makes a difference um, uh, as to uh, approximately 10, 15 percent of all unicorns. So, all those companies with valuation of one billion U.S. dollars um, is in Europe. Uh, those uh, those companies are just a rare. Um, uh, resource that we have in this continent. It's mostly the United States or uh, Asia that is being the place for uh, the creation of such investments. So in order for, you know, uh, we, we have here two countries with a, uh, you know, very good exceptional growth rate in terms of um, uh, the economy in the previous years, will probably go, go uh, into a growth uh, path uh, after the pandemic or uh, getting out of the pandemic. But in order to have the same growth rates five in five, seven, eight, or 10 years, you need to be ahead of the game. You, you need to be ahead of the pack. And this is where Asian countries are. This is where the United States are. Um, and this is where the Euro European Union is not. And uh, uh, of course, Western Europe uh, can manage with a slower growth uh, rate. Uh, but speaking as a Central European, uh, we're probably too hungry, uh, too underdeveloped. We still want to have the possibility to, to grow, to have a bigger economy, to have a welfare society, um, to, to you know, have the same perks as those people who uh, went through the, uh, uh, the growth path of the 70s of the, or the 80s in Western Europe. And um, uh, this is why. This is basically the answer. You need to go and create the value for the future economy. Uh, without that, we're going to go the same path as other European countries with a slower growth rate. And this is when we're going to go. Uh, we're, we're not going to converge. We're not going to go. Uh, we're not going to become as rich as the EU average uh, in GDP per capita. We're not going to uh, have the same uh, levels of, I don't know, quality of services, of public services, or whatever, because we're not going to have the possibility to create that. That's why it's so important, and uh, that's why it's also too important, so important to have those companies stay uh, in the region, if even they do business outside, if they do uh, do go um, uh, international. Uh, as a Polish company, Booksy, which is quite po you know popular, if it's not the lockdown when you have to go and book a, a book a, a book a place at one of your barbers, uh, because now they're currently in Poland, they're closed. So 
but if you were, were go to want to go to to a barber, you're gonna use the service, and it's the same service you're gonna do, use in a different um, part of the world. Um, but it's what would you like is uh, to for them, which they have a presence in the um, in the United States in Silicon Valley, but stay to have some um, business development uh, or part of their corporation, uh, small or, or medium, to have, to still be present. In, uh, in Poland or in Hungary in order to create that, that value. Because in the near future, maybe uh, it's, it's Ireland, which is gonna develop, uh, you know, 25% uh, per year as in 2015, uh, because of the financial flows of some corporations which pay taxes there. And uh, if not, the, you know, the, the, the economy of the future is gonna be a pretty much different, um, more service driven, less industrials and this means a lot of change for the for the business models of, of, of uh, and also tax models of uh, for, for 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 our for our region um, and uh, uh, I wanted to say something about the r d support um, we, we did we did actually a paper I cited uh, in the opinion piece I, I wrote for this uh, discussion um, about uh, the r d help and the um, tax breaks available in Poland and also other uh, uh, European countries. Uh, after 2016, and this is what Marcin Sova is, is actually uh, cre the creator of uh, the tax breaks that are available in the system, they became a, a lot more popular. Um, uh, I guess it's, uh, is it 3,000 companies, but the number of uh, the valuation of the, the tax breaks uh, is quite a lot higher right now. This was also in connection with a lot of um, new uh, expenditures being seen by the tax system uh, from private companies. Uh, as of 2016, 2017, 2018, we, we the increase, uh, the, the increase on R&D uh, by, uh, by the state was, uh, by the, the private companies were, was higher by the private sector is becoming a lot higher. We're not near our goals of two percentage points uh, of GDP being spent on R&D, uh, but it's quite easy. And uh, what I can tell you is that the tax breaks we have in the system in Poland right now are probably one of the most uh, um, uh, holistic measures uh, available in the region. Uh, I guess it's only Slovakia that has uh, the tax breaks even lower. The corporate income tax level for, for companies using the IP box uh, for, uh, for creation of, um, um, uh, for the IP box is basically 5%. Um, and this makes it one of the lowest marginal tax rates uh, for corporate income tax in the European Union. Uh, Hungary also has some of those tax initiatives for companies to, to innovate. Uh, also a, a very competitive tax system uh, in terms of corporation taxation, but it's, um, uh, um, it's basically all you can do. If, if you can be very competitive, but still not see the results of it because companies are risk averse and this comes to our nature. Uh, this comes where do we come from, from, from uh, eastern part of uh, Europe, uh, people uh, not having enough capital to spend yet. Uh, this probably could, could uh, uh, it's, you know, the best, the best business opportunities is you using someone else's money, not your own. And uh, this is uh, uh, also why uh, the, uh, the, this, um, the supportive uh, funding and other business partners are so important because people are a bit more risk averse in our region and they don't want to spend that much money uh, on some endeavors that cannot give um, easy um, uh, um, uh, ROI uh, in comparison to the other investments available on the market, which are less risky. And uh, so this is the basic point I, I, I can I can make, and it's you know obvious when you do see the da data on risk uh, risk aversion, uh, and this this is basically our region, uh, if you look uh, in, in Europe. Thank you, uh, thank you. Now uh, we have uh, uh, some other questions. 
Uh, one of them is, uh, I would like to ask more details, what is the opinion of speakers about how advanced are the ecosystems as a whole? Uh, partially is, is answered. And their actors in Hungary and Poland. And plus, uh, what about culture of meritocracy? It is in the chat, uh, in the chat. Yes, please. Professor. Since I am a big fan of meritocracy, <laughs> I would like to add to this question that uh, the triple helix supposes the model, even the quadruple helix, which also, you know, involves the, the civil sector. Uh, all of these frameworks, all of these models and all of these endeavors from the state to create a frame where everything works ideally will not work in reality because some of the players do not have the drive, do not have the motivation or do not have the resources, human resources usually to be involved in this ecosystem. So I think what is key to an ideal state and we're probably not there yet, uh, we need some time, but I can see a good tendency. So I can see that my own company uh, has developed from, from being a, a rather closed, uh, uh, not really innovative uh, culture uh, to an open, more curious, uh, more uh, eager to share uh, culture. And this is, I think, uh, up to every every stakeholder within this ecosystem to decide whether they they will go the extra mile to get there or they will just stay out of this ecosystem because that's the key and i think also the most important thing is to have a common purpose and about meritocracy uh i think this goes beyond uh measuring each and every participant's success or contribution because at the at the end of the day what we are aiming for is is a common purpose and a common uh, achievement so that that's uh, i think quite a distant vision but uh, many of the players in hungary are going uh, towards this direction thank you professor please uh, may i just uh... I've read here a question which is quite interesting that Polish uh, venture capital funds do not invest in Hungary and Hungarian way uh, venture capital funds do not invest in Poland. Uh, maybe it is the, the situation. I am not uh, so familiar with the question, but I do think that uh, how can we solve this problem uh, and uh, if this problem exists? Uh, um, it's, it's a very interesting and very important question, I think, because uh, uh, when we uh, are talking about the region uh, as a whole, uh, I think this is the first step to solve this uh, situation, which is currently could be that the Polish uh, venture capital funds don't invest in Hungary and the Hungary and not in, 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 in Poland. So when we uh, uh, discuss more and we could uh, look at the region as a, as a economically as a booming uh, region then maybe in the future would be that uh, that uh, our venture capital companies invest in uh, in uh, different countries and uh, I, I think it is also important to see uh, where the different countries has its strengths and opportunities and niche markets and and so on just one point as far as i know that uh, the polish startups are very good in gaming yeah, that's uh, this this part of the of the, the digital uh, uh, market. The, the Hungarian are specialized rather uh, different closely to the to the industries and so on. So I, I think the the, the niche markets uh, for the startups are in Poland and also in, in, in the Czech Republic or in Hungary in a different part of the economy and and also for the for the venture capital uh, funds would provide a different uh, possibilities and when we put together the, the, the whole region uh, is also a market size yeah? that's a bit bigger as, uh, as at home but I, I think it's a question which uh, deserves to to discuss to 
to do a little bit research on that, uh, what the facts are. And, uh, and I think that uh, when we have such a kind of discussion, what we have today, and, and also the other, which, uh, which rather uh, signalize that there is a region uh, which is catching up now, uh, could uh, be a possibility for the venture capital funds. Just one point to the whole issues, uh, uh, unicorns, so on, and everything. Yeah? We shouldn't forget Europe as a whole is lagging behind a little bit in the whole issue of startups and, and also in innovation. And uh, when we place all countries in this issue, we should consider also this. If I may also answer to the last question about the investment, uh, the VC funding, the cross-border VC funding, I uh, maybe it's controversial, but I honestly think that people um, overestimate um, the importance of VC funding for starting a company. Um, we work with many startups, and to be honest, the best ones are the ones who don't have any money at all. They are the hungriest from these companies. They are the ones who know that if they do not make a deal tomorrow with their clients, they're going to die. Um, we have a small investment fund. We invested um, between 100,000 and 200,000 euros to each company. And it's not a lot. It's nothing, to be honest. It's enough to um, pay for a couple of uh, programmers for a year. But I, I honestly believe that Business is much more important than VC funding. There is a lot of funding on the market. We have companies that uh, will, uh, that one is also have funding. One, is, one of them is also uh, already have a client in Poland and now, now they go for funding. Startups or innovative companies, I would say, should build business. Money is gonna follow. It's, it's not the other way around. So first they should be able to show traction so show that they are, they are be able to do some business. And then I'm sure that the money is going to follow. That's always how it happens. May I ask you, Laszlo, do you, are you sure that this is the case, that Hungarian VCs do not invest in Polish startups? Because uh, it, 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 I, I think it's, it's, it's rather, you know, I'm curious. Uh, what I know is that uh, Mall has a, a, a VC um, and the, they are called lead ventures and they make decisions based on the competencies. So there is no regional consideration whatsoever. And uh, they do invest into cross-border collaborations. So uh, for me, this is news. Uh, and I would like to know whether any of you is aware of, of the fact that it's, it's, it's true. Thank you very much. I, I got... So he did that I forget about the beginning of the question and I just replied to the ones who was in, what was it very interesting for me. But anyway, the thing is, it depends on the source of money. So there is a, a lot of EU funding um, for, for the VCs in Hungary and Poland. And as, I, as far as I know from the Hungarian ones, many of them are only able to invest in companies that are incorporated in Hungary. I'm, I'm quite sure that that's, that's also the same with, uh, with the Polish funds that are state-backed, but private investors are really happy, the Hungarian ones, I'm sure, they are really happy if they can invest in Polish companies. I'm sure about that. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, uh, uh, a part of a question is not answered yet, uh, which was, I add something, only a few yeah. uh, words, uh, because as I know, the VC funds uh, baked by state in Poland uh, invest like private investors. So the state is a, a passive investor with no influence where and why and in what they invest. So they, they are private investors baked by state. Uh, and it was a question about uh, uh, data of companies in Poland that I uh, using R&D tax relief. Uh, these are hard data I have from Statistical Office and Ministry of Finance. And uh, I think the uh, promotion of R&D uh, tax relief is uh, still needed 
because most of the startups and even SMEs do not know that they can take advantage uh, of such a uh, discount. And companies also are often afraid of being inspected by tax services if they take the advantage of tax relief. This is a fairly common uh, belief in Poland. Maybe not in Poland, I don't know. Uh, Mr. Sova, no, there is a question and uh, I think it is not answered uh, yet. Why do you think that only half of the Polish firms, about 3,000 as revealed by Mr. Sova, engaged in R&D take advantage of super programs? So I know it, I, I suspect it this is hard data from uh, Statistical Office and the Minister of Finance. So we, we, we have uh, counted them. Thank you. Uh, and uh, the next question, when does innovation become mass innovation? Is there some percentage limit that needs to be exceeded to talk about mass innovation? That was a question from Daniel. So who knows the answer for that? No, there is no such a percentage anyway, that uh, the mass innovation means in, in, a, in, in a broad sense that not just mass, it is a bottom up. Yeah? Uh, that's that's the, the, the most important. Uh, we, it, innovation is also driven by, by big companies. Uh, they, they mostly, uh, what they do mostly is continuous innovation. When we have mass innovation, that means that, that is why the startups are crucially important. This can lead to, to disruptive innovation, uh, which uh, change uh, the games in many industries and, and so on. So um, such a figure doesn't exist. Yeah, that is the one thing. But uh, uh, when we look at uh, the other issues, uh, when we expecting and waiting for unicorns, this means we don't have uh, at the moment mass innovation. And when we look back in the history, there, there have been also time in Hungary, but also in Poland and, and, and in, in Europe in the history, uh, the, the first industrial revolution, for example, when, when really bottom up large mass uh, innovation, was the main driver beyond the development. So, so that is what we what we need, and we need this. It's not just because we would like to have the mass innovation. We need to achieve this kind of transformation, which was also mentioned um, that uh, all countries need a change to a more innovation-driven economy. Yeah? We achieved what we could achieve with this uh, uh, manufacturing-led uh, uh, transformation. Okay, we arrived uh, to the point where we could arrive with this, that uh, industry-driven um, uh, development, it is the first part of the, of the catch-up process, but now we should turn, or we are at the point to turn to the innovation-driven uh, uh, development and this years where we are now in is is, uh, is is very very important in this whole whole change. That is why it's important the mass innovation. However, uh, it doesn't exist a figure for that. Thank you. Uh, uh, another question to Mr. Jonas and all. Uh, you mentioned that besides big corporates, local SMEs should also be involved more to benefit from innovative solutions offered by startups. Are SMEs in the region open for innovative ideas or is there any need for change of mindset for them to become early adopters of innovation? Mr. Jonas, please. Mm, great, uh, great question. Um, I believe that innovation is in itself a mindset. If we, if we define innovation as disruption, then we are going on in the wrong way. So if, if there is a need for a change of mindset, I, I would say that there is a need for SMEs to understand what innovation, what innovation is. Because what I saw is that if you talk to someone, it can be, 
It can be a company which has a, a many millions of euros revenue per year. And if, if you ask them if, are, if they are innovating or not, they say, no, I'm not, I'm doing my job. But if you go into the books, you see that we have a new CRM, we digitalize our logistics. So I do not think that the mindset is need to be changed. I, I think that these companies have to understand what really innovation is. And, the, and if, if they are able to do that, then they will see these opportunities. But as far as I got into the depth of the researches, many of the companies who say that we are doing that innovating, actually they are innovating very much, but, they, but the media is showing us that innovation is the new Facebook, not the ones what you know, are changing our supply chain. Thank you. Uh, so the question was targeted to all panelists. If uh, any of you is having a comment, please feel free. Uh, if not, then we can switch uh, to to another question targeted uh, or or meaning what uh, what do you recommend the Felczak Foundation to facilitate the Hungarian and Polish cooperation in the field of innovation? Uh, I I think uh, it could be. Uh, translated also in a way uh, that uh, what we could do overall uh, for for this Hungary and Polish cooperation in the field of only innovation. I think one of the good examples could be coming from Laszlo. If you do, you mind sharing the the We Four startup program that you are running currently. Thank you very much. It's always better if. Uh someone uh, is uh, mentioning it before me. So um, what we saw at Design Terminal is that there are many programs all around Europe uh, working with, uh, with startups, but the real business value is not creating. We do some mentoring and we, we help them to have their business plan, but, but nothing's really happening. So, and, and we saw that the markets are in itself are not enough to, it, to attract good startups. So what we did is we started to define um, the region as the Visegrad region. So if you're coming to any of these countries, you are not coming just to Hungary or Poland, but you are coming to the Visegrad region. You are coming to a market which is much bigger than any of the countries in itself. So this is one of the, the important points. And the other, what we did is we said that if we are doing a startup program, it should be only about business. So what we do is we connect startups with corporations that they can have business with. We, if they want to um, meet with these regional corporations, they have to send an email, nothing happens. They don't know who to call, months are going before even having their first meeting. So what we do, what we do, we kick the door of these companies like, hey, we have the best startups in the region. If you want to work with them, you know, we are, they are right at, their, at, at your door. You just have to tell us what, what fields do you want to innovate and we will be able to provide you the best startups. So this is the third year uh, the, when we are doing and we are trying to expand it a bit more now. Uh, until this year, only four startups per semester were included and now 20 of them are included um, working on the success of the, of the project. But what, what we believe is, as, as I mentioned a couple of times, that you have to be, you have to be um, strong enough to concentrate on real value creation, not saying that, you know, I, I, you know, I had a good presentation, I took some people around the four countries and, and we're done, but, you know, get, get up your, 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 the sleeves of your shirt and go um, exactly where, where these startups want to work and who these startups want to meet. And to be honest, what I found is that um, it, it builds up a great community. These like-minded people, they can be startups, but actually the, um, the owners of these SMEs who set up something great in the region are also like, like these startups. They have the mindset that of, of wanting to do something great. It doesn't matter what it is, to be honest. They just want to do something great. They want to meet with people who want to do the same. So um, another important factor is the community that these people shouldn't feel that they are alone. You know, if there's someone and go, who's going around in these countries and doesn't feel that they, they have, have their buddies and they find who they want to work with, then 
then they lost, the lose his, uh, uh, his courage to do that. But if you have a community of already successful entrepreneurs, already successful companies and startups who, um, who want to get on the path, you, you will be able to do something great. That, but you have to be um, much more personal than people think. Um, you have to really work with these people, understand them, know them. And for example, not just um, showing them to a couple of companies, but, but working very hard to find the exact fit who they can work with. Thank you for mentioning that, because from the corporate perspective, you know, uh, if a window opens in a corporation, then we usually need the results immediately. And for us, having access based on competence to a regional pool of startups or ideas, that is a great advantage. And uh, just to mention, you know, uh, a Polish uh, startup company who creates a, a barbecue uh, brick, bricket, is that a word in English? So for, you know, to, for doing barbecue from, from coffee, uh, ground coffee leftovers, and that, that's their uh, product. Uh, we came to hear about them just thanks to these regional and international uh, scouting and startup uh, hub uh, companies. So we are really thankful for that. And I think that is a, a great help for, you know, for those uh, companies which do not have the time to really go out and look for every uh, country. So the regional pool is a big plus. Thank you. Uh, if I don't mistake, uh, almost all questions we answered, uh, except Anna's question. Uh, and I would say that uh, could be the last question as our time will be over soon. Uh, if, I, if I may add just, uh, okay. just a short question, because uh, this Vetla Sarchak Foundation, you know, uh, I think it was partly answered, but uh, I would be really happy if everybody could say something on this topic, because this is the reason why we are organizing these debates, to show which way we should go in this Polish-Hungarian cooperation. We understand that from uh, innovation and startup perspective, a regional cooperation is the target that we should um, focus on. And um, I don't know whether um, any kind of horizontal target could be set up, like a university cooperation or company university cooperation. So what would be your message uh, to the independent uh, units um, working on this topic of innovation and startup ecosystem? If you would uh, give an advice to the WhatsApp Sarchak Foundation. It's more important than the branches because basically what I, my question was is the branches, where is uh, from innovation point of view, which branches are the, uh, what we see, what are the most biggest innovators? I think uh, partly we received the answer that um, for that during the debate. If I may I'll answer a bit again to that question. Uh, I have to be honest with you, I have a great advantages uh, and my advantage is that uh, we are already working on this project. Uh, the end of the next year, the foundation asked, asked us to help, help them how to um, be part of the innovation ecosystem and, and we are working on a huge research on, on that topic. But, but I, what I can say uh, beforehand is that uh, um, there is not uh, not an actor in, in, in these two countries that is uh, serving as a mediator um, uh, between the two countries. So there is no one already uh, who has the data if, if a Hungarian SME wants, wants to get connected to a Polish startup. If a Polish start, startup wants to work with a Hungarian university. So there is a, a great need for a player who is able to facilitate these processes. And I think that's, that, that, that would be a great role. Well, I can say something on a very practical level uh, because the, the, you know, what's 
uh, definitely needed for everybody uh, involved this meeting uh, ideas with money. Uh, so um, uh, going back to a little bit more of my business experience, I would say that uh, Mm, the most important issue is uh, um, creating a, a positive buzz on companies being placed in Hungary and Poland or in other countries of the region. Um, this is made uh, mainly by consulting companies and uh, investment funds and advisory companies uh, in the United States or in some other countries, naming those high profile, interesting uh, companies that you need to invest in, uh, and these portfolios are quite a quite an you know good introduction for many investors on why to be interested uh, in some country, and it's a it's a it's a good advertisement made for the companies being present in Poland in Hungary, um, in order to scale up to find an investor or just to advertise the services that they provide. So this is a quite important uh, and quite easy matter for someone who's doing this um, economic diplomacy kind of work, uh, where you have the, the possibility to, to know the markets, know more experts, uh, to have a more uh, unbiased view on the companies and you know also to, to see the bullshit, sorry for saying that, in the statements of many companies that are in, present here. So many of the startups are playing, you know, uh, empty shells, uh, uh, you know, which want to get the funding and not actually develop the, pro the program or the product as, uh, itself at the end. Uh, so uh, it's truly important to also do some, some due diligence uh, with some people uh, present on the markets in order to know if uh, the company uh, uh, is as good as advertised uh, somewhere on the internet. Uh, because the, the, the prog product itself, the service itself could be very substantial, but it just could be just a website. So, uh, and, and then creating a true, true index of, of those companies that could be quite, quite interesting for the Visegrad countries or just for Hungary, Poland, I, I would see that useful. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, also for, from me, so maybe not, just connected with startup in 100 uh, percent but i have uh, the idea of return of full-fledged student exchange between poland and hungary so i am the best example of such an exchange uh, i i graduated uh, here in, in in hungary in 1995 and that time every year about 20 to 30 polish students graduated at hungarian universities and about 15, 20 Hungarian students graduated in Poland. So uh, this agreement uh, did, uh, uh, does not uh, exist uh, since 2001, I think. So my recommendation for, for Chakalopi trying to support such, a, uh, such an effort, I think it would be useful not only in uh, startup cases, but, but also uh, for administration, for business general, in general. Thank you very much, uh, to all of you. If uh, nobody else is uh, willing to react, uh, uh, I would like to close this panel. And I am more than grateful uh, for, to all of you to take part uh, in this, uh, I learned really a lot, and uh, the context is really good, highlighted. And uh, I am uh, I am very grateful to the audience as well, as uh, they raised very good questions, and uh, this contributed a lot to the dynamics and the, the content of this panel too. So, dear colleagues, uh, dear guests, uh, speakers, and audience, thank you very much uh, for taking part. Uh, in this session, and uh, I close uh, hereby uh, our session right now, our panel, and uh, please follow the other uh, events of the uh, project. Uh, other very interesting topics uh, will come. Uh, Anna, you know better than me when the next event will uh, be organized. 
Yeah, the next event will be in May, end of May, and it will be on the bilateral um, uh, relationship, and uh, we will see uh, the possibilities for finding such mediators or uh, finding the uh, conclusions of uh, the horizontal uh, discussions. And I really, on my side, thank you very much because it was really a thrilling and very interesting conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you. And goodbye and, uh, and take care. Thank it was you very a pleasure much. to meet you. Bye-bye. Stay nice healthy and you. have a good evening. <laughs> thank you. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you very so much. Bye-bye.